Carrie. I'm here with Maria from Spain. Hola. Who has been, she's a Spanish teacher in Colorado right now, and her partner, Juandre, who's been teaching in Chicago, is also climbing Cotopaxi with me. So usually you have to go somewhere in Quito to a little outfit like this to get set up. And you can't really do it by yourself. You need a guide. It's one guide to two people. So it's nice to have two people, but I couldn't convince oh. anyone for my trip to do it. So it's me by myself with a guide. I'm jumping on their trip. They will also have a guide. We're gonna jump in this car, go on a bit of a journey and take off from here. So that's the story, Cotopaxi. Cruising along a highway for a little bit. We picked up Jose in the back, extra guide. Rafael here is our main dude. And we're gonna be entering the park here in a little bit. So drive is about an hour from Quito to the entrance of Cotopaxi and then another hour and change to get up to where we need to go. We'll probably stop at some point for a quick snack or bite or something like that. So it has been raining, so that could translate to snow on the mountain. We'll see how it shapes up. Pretty. So here is the map. Basically, there's a little hike here, which I don't think we'll do. We'll go to the refugio and then hike up this one of these routes. It is 19,347 feet, 5,897 meters. Very similar to Kilimanjaro, 70 feet higher. So, and 4,500 feet higher than the mountain climbing. So we're just signing in here. Station. Station. Rainy, beautiful. Hopefully the peak might be above the clouds. That's my hope for tomorrow, but we will see. So we are having a little stop here at the cafeteria, the botanical garden. Uh, gonna have some potato soup. All seems to be part of the deal. Encouraging me to put some boots on yet, but we'll see. Rafael recommends boots. Yes. <laughs> so this is the our little Joint, almost like a, a Nepali guest house. La Carla está en el Everest. Mm. I have a little cocoa tea. It's supposed to be good for the digestive, good for altitude. So, sort of a hearty meal. Getting a thumbs up from Quandary. <laughs> We're making it to the top just in case. Look at this lovely view. Can you believe the crater we can see here? The fumaroles coming out. It is just gorgeous. Wow. It's beautiful up here. So we're on to dirt road for a little while. We're in a, a valley. And then we are gonna do a bit of a hike up to the refuge. The whole valley floor is sort of purple from the flowers. It is gorgeous out here. Only one who's getting out. We're heading towards Cotopaxi right now, which is that. And huge hill, which you can't really see too much of, but kind of cool to get a preview. So, we get driven up to here. It looks about like the moon. And then we have an hour hike up. Looks like the trail right there, or maybe over there. We've got one, two, three, four, five other cars here, so there'll be some other groups heading up. And we got wind! <laughs> so the warm up hike is straight up to the refuge. Breathing heavy but steady pace. Good little exercise to go through. Gorgeous. Light rain. First little landmark. Jose's moving up at a good pace. It's just kind of ashy cinders going up. You got a ways to go still. that's the refugio or not but if it is it's a good warm-up 
not too bad. Maybe another building higher, we'll see. So these are the bunks. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, three, twenty-six people or so. And this will be me. Getting a little peekaboo at the mountain up there. That is the top coming in and out of the clouds. But it also gives you. I want to be in that video. Here's Liam and Ava playing cards with me, teach me how to play boo boo. Well, just given a briefing by Rafael, Jose, no real English, me, no real Spanish, so it'll be interesting being roped up to him as we go. The way it works is we'll be in the dark. I think they're waking up at 11, I'm waking up at 12.30. I don't want to, I don't want to be at the top when it's dark. So this first part is mixed up and down. We put on crampons here, we hike up. It's sort of steep, down, steep, down, steep, down, like seven times. We go across to this, we go up to the top, and then several steep sections when you get up. Uh, six hours is kind of the average. I would anticipate a little less, probably five. Who knows what it's gonna be like. We had crampon lessons, hopefully they'll stay together. These are mine, I think they've been tried and tested. Then the Sportivas, I'll wear a couple extra pairs of socks and go. So it's probably one of these deals where maybe six hours up and down. So, all right, tomorrow I'm gonna go to sleep. Well, it is about 12.20. The room is empty, except for Jose and I. I asked to start a little later. Uh, to let people spread out and not get up to the top in the dark. Um, I'm thinking if as long as we're on the trail by one, so 40 minutes, we should be fine. I'm gonna leave a few things here, sleeping bag and a little extra gear and get up and get out reasonably quick, but not so quick that we're going to be chasing people up the hill. So I'm feeling okay, considering we're at 16,000 feet. Uh, <laughs> be heading out. Well, we are heading out. It is just a little bit past 1 a.m. It's windy but clear. The temperature's decent. So just be a slog up I think. Not much to show because of the darkness. Well, we have reached the crampon stop. Everybody's gearing up. areas we've been going for about two hours we'll probably get up but it's still dark unfortunately but we'll see moving good say is going well so, right. well we are 315 we are uh or 415 sorry we are 10 minutes from the top according to jose he has been leading the way the whole way Ooh. It's still dark. That's the moon, a full moon. And the light you can see over in the distance there, if you can see it, is Quito. So, a little bit out of the wind here. I'm hoping to do a little more filming on the way down. It's just steady straight up. Interesting walking with crampons, too. First time I've done that, so. Woo! And I think. Yeah. Muy bien. Muy bien. So, Martin is up here. Well done. Okay. Bien. And I think it's probably going to be a case of we're going to go back down because we don't want to wait an extra hour and a half. Hour and a half for proper daylight, unfortunately. 
So, tactical error, leaving, leaving a little too early. I had no idea how long it would take to get out. But, topical to Foxy. Sure, it's beautiful. I've seen pictures. It's beautiful in the night as well, but I think we may be heading down here in a moment. So, happy Father's Day. I am a father. Oh, happy Father's Day. Right there. And you, it too? What's that? See? I was hoping to see some of this crazy glacier stuff in the light, but looks like that is not going to happen because we're pumping down pretty quick. Snow is just totally wind packed and shaped. It's just beautiful. I wish you could see. So, just cruising down. The crampons provide pretty, pretty dang good grip. So, and again, just coming past all these icicles and various formations and things. Oh my God, look at that. I don't know if you can quite make it out, but it's just beautiful. I don't know if we can quite see. The sky is lighting up. <laughs> Should have left about two hours later, I think, or maybe an hour and a half. But this is amazing. Sorry, the, the view isn't quite what it would be in the daylight, but wow, this is beautiful. Well, we made it back to the crampon removal spot here. This is such a beautiful morning. We definitely have some wind coming in. So, I think we've got another 20 minutes maybe downhill and then we'll be done. So, almost done before the sun. Just reveling in this morning daybreak. This is beautiful. So, now we're back onto basically the scree and lava. So, here we go. God, look at that. Woo! down the screen. Bringing it on home to the refuge. I love this kind of slidey, scree ash running. Even though it's 16,000 feet, 17,000 feet, it doesn't take too much effort because gravity's helping. Well, I'm super happy about the the effort in succeeding 
but I definitely should have left later. But the guide was raising his eyebrows when I said I wanted to leave, you know, get up an hour and a half after everybody. But wow! Woo! This is something. Oh, well, back at the refuge. Look at this. Man, we'll have to figure out what time it is. Let's see how we get. You can see the mountain in the white up there right now. It is gorgeous. Hello, hello. Ooh. So coming down the last sliding part, we came up from the parking lot yesterday, which was a uh, little bit of a slog in weather. Today, it's just beautiful. Got a few people coming up to visit the refuge, enjoying the altitude. Hola, buen día. One unfortunate thing on this hike, because the harness is on my pockets and I'm running down the end, one of my phones popped out. So, the Adian phone is gone, which is a bit of a drag. But, um, so, if you do this hike as a pair, something like $280 each, including pretty much everything, including some gear and that sort of thing. If you do it singly, it's basically double, 530 or something like that. But they gave me a bit of a break because they had already a tour going up, so they just had to bring the one extra guide. And I think I paid 380 for the day, which for a actual mountaineering experience on Glaciated Peak. It's almost 20,000 feet. That's a pretty good price, as far as I'm concerned. Happy to have had the experience. Lucky on the weather today. So, almost down to the cars. I got Rafael here, who is a certified badass. He has been climbing Cotopaxi for how long have you been climbing Cotopaxi? You? You? Me? Yeah. Uh, how many years? How many years? About uh, uh, 40 years ago. 40 years ago. And he has climbed the mountain. Is it 860 times? How many? Uh, 864. 864 times. I am willing to bet there are not too many people who have done that. That's amazing. That is amazing. That's a lot of times up and down the mountain. I asked him in the car and he said of all the volcanoes you could climb in the area, Cotopaxi is his favorite, so that's appropriate. Yes. 